This is ME370 at Portland State University. Lecture 4, Introduction to Intellectual Property. This is part 5 of the lecture, Trademark and Trade Secrets. A trademark basically is a brand or brand symbol. It allows you to identify your product, your company, in a distinctive way that makes that product memorable to other people. So the value here is in the representation suggesting a unique product or service. You don't need to register trademarks. You can just assert them, but the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office recommends that you do so, especially if you anticipate litigation. Either you want to stop somebody else from infringing on your trademark or you worry that somebody else might at a later date come up with a trademark that's similar to yours and then claim that you can't use this trademark. There are three ways of indicating a trademark. The circle with the capital R in it is a registered trademark. TM and SM are symbols that you can affix to your image and assert that they're trademarks or service marks and they're unregistered. Here's some examples of trademarks. The uh, Nike swoosh and IBM and Chevrolet logo are probably instantly recognizable. In the iPhone, the word is registered. An interesting story with a PSU connection, the Nike swoosh was created by a PSU graphics design student. The story goes that Phil Knight, he was teaching accounting at night at PSU. Mr. Knight needed a new symbol for his his fledgling company, he hired Miss Davison for $35 to create the Nike swoosh. And she did, and it uh, is a very recognizable trademark today. In 1983, she cashed in a bit more um, in recognition of the importance of the swoosh to Nike. She was given a diamond swoosh ring and an envelope filled with Nike stock certificates. So Miss Davison, former PSU student, worked out pretty well. Interestingly, there's a trademark on the Hershey bar design. In June 2012, it was awarded by the United States Patent and Trademark Office. The description here reads, the mark is a configuration of a candy bar that consists of 12 equally sized recessed rectangular panels arranged in a four panel by three panel format with each panel having its own raised border within a large rectangle. The unmistakable shape of the Hershey bar is protected. Somebody can't create a chocolate bar that looks like this, even if you removed the word Hershey's from each of those little rectangles. And that represents an investment in Hershey's intellectual property to create the design. This is not a design patent. It's a trademark. Trade secrets are yet another alternative for intellectual property. And as you might imagine from the word, they have to be secret. So there are trade secrets you don't know about. You can try to protect your IP by keeping it a secret, and the classic example is the recipe for Coca-Cola. The benefits to a trade secret are that the, dis the idea itself, the concept, the innovation, does not have to be disclosed. Remember that a patent is a transactional kind of deal. You get the protection, you get legal protection from other people using your invention. You can stop them from using it, basically. But the trade-off is you patent filing basically is an exposition of the innovation. The recipe for Coca-Cola is a secret. No one has to know about it. The other protection that's important is that it can last longer than the 20-year of a lifetime patent. So Coca-Cola, the soft drink, is much older than 20 years. Uh, another company can't reproduce Coca-Cola with that recipe. The cost of a trade secret approach is that you have to maintain total vigilance to prevent disclosure. You may have to make sure that the secret is kept a secret. Furthermore, you can only allege theft of the secret after it's been stolen. So ideally, no one knows you have a secret recipe, but if they if it gets out, then you have to chase people down and assert that they've stolen your property. U.S. legal code has requirements for trade secrets. First of all, the owner has to demonstrably take measures to keep it secret. In other words, you can't later claim that someone stole your secret if you hadn't, didn't have protocols in place to protect it or to keep it secret. Secondly, there needs to be some economical benefit associated with it. I couldn't get a trade secret on a secret handshake. 
you know, I'd, I'd have to keep it secret. I'm not sure how I would economically benefit from having a secret handshake, and so therefore I couldn't sue somebody from me. I'm sure. I'm sure there are, are creative legal minds that would find some way to protect a secret handshake, but generally that was something that wouldn't be a trade secret. Interestingly enough, in 2006, three Coca-Cola employees got the recipe for Coca-Cola and tried to sell it to Pepsi. Pepsi turned them in. Pepsi didn't want to have to deal with this. They didn't want uh, to, to have in their possession stolen property. They didn't want to be accused of stealing their competitor's recipe. And I think the story goes that uh, Pepsi thinks their recipe tastes better anyways. So in summary, we've discussed four types of intellectual property. Patents, copyrights, trademarks, trade secrets. There's a lot of information here. As engineers, we need to be aware of these intellectual property issues and we need to respect them. We may, in fact, want to use them in our professional services to protect our intellectual property. Patents, and in particular, Utility patents are the form that we most likely would be interacting with or dealing with as engineers. However, copyrights are especially important in software. Uh, software uh, sometimes is patented, but most often it's copyrighted. Uh, trademarks and trade secrets are also important.